presentation contains current opinions of Moe Sansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor, and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice. We make no assurance that Moe's opinions or illustrations will accurately predict future prices or financial markets. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance. A detailed disclosure can be found at the end of the presentation. And now here's Mo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Compact YouTube Market Wrap Update for January the 29th, 2024. I'm Mo Ansari, President of Compaq Asset Management, and thank you for joining me today. Remember, go to compaq.com forward slash media, subscribe to this, to all those communications. If you subscribe to this YouTube update, whenever I post one, you will be notified. Also, you can get the weekly podcast where I talk in detail with Javed. Both of us talk about what happened last week, what to expect this week, and also all of the communications that we have, the market wrap uh, weekly newsletter, you can get, it's a one pager, just a quick update, and you, you can register for upcoming events. Also, I will be in uh, Scottsdale next month, so if you want to attend that, uh, the February seminar, I will be there in person. Make sure you can make a reservation, it's all free, so go to compact.com forward slash media. Also, if you would like to set up an appointment, all you have to do is go to uh, compact.com or invest at compact.com, drop us a note, and we'll be more than happy to schedule an appointment for you. Looking at the markets last week, good week in the markets. We were up 1% for the S&P. Year to date, we are up 2.62%. As the first five days of January, that's how January goes, and how January goes, goes the rest of the year. The first five days were fractionally lower uh, for the S&P. If we get a positive month, I think that would be good. We need, we've got another a uh, couple of days to go, so we'll see how we turn out. We do have a lot of uh, news coming out this week. We do have earnings. All the tech, 19% of the S&P earnings will be reported this week, and all the MAG7, as they're called the Magnificent 7 companies, the large tech companies, are going to be reporting this week their earnings and what their expectations are. Also, we have a Fed meeting this week. Expectations, obviously, no change in interest rates. And then on Friday, we get the payroll report. That is the unemployment report. So a lot of news that can be the market mover. Last week, uh, the biggest mover, energy. A lot of that was due to the Houthi uh, attacks on uh, U.S. troops in Jordan. Unfortunately, we lost three of our service members there. 20 some were injured. Uh, and again, that's what I talked about in October, that uh, as far as the Gaza war was limited to Gaza, financially, it's a terrible uh, tragedy on both sides. It, it, and, but as long as it does not expand, it does not have a major impact on the financial markets. But I talked about expansion. I talked about the Houthis in Yemen. No one was talking about that. And now we're seeing the Houthis attack shipping in the Red Sea, and that is causing uh, a lot of the freights, uh, the shipping charges to go up dramatically, and that is affecting world trade. So there's always this threat of an expansion, and if we do expand, that is not good uh, for the markets. But that's why energy popped up. It was up a lot this morning above the 200-day moving average. I'll take a look at the charts, but now we're back down again. Communication services were second best last week. And then financials also did well, up 1.9% last week. So that is one of the areas that, you know, I like for 2024, uh, one of the areas that I think could do much better. Looking at oil again, as I mentioned, up, 77, up to $77 compared to $71 the week before or in the month before. So we've gone up nearly $6, $7, but we were very oversold in, in that market. I was expecting a bounce, and that's what we're seeing but I think it will be short-lived. Uh, interest rates uh, for the week unchanged. We were up about slightly on the 10-year, um, really unchanged. When you look at the week-to-week -week change, we are about the same from where we were the week before. Today, we're down to about 4.10, 4.09, and that is uh, below the 50-day, hovering right at the 200-day moving average for the yield. One of the things that we've seen, the 19th, uh, uh, January, first time that the S&P hit an all-time high while the Russell was in a bear market. Historically, the Russell 2000 uh, draws down surrounding S&P peaks uh, have been bullish. Whenever we've seen 
uh, the Russell go down and the S&P takes off uh, have been bullish for both the small and the large cap markets with the small caps outperforming uh, on, on the average. If you go back, uh, whenever we hit a new high, these are number of days following the new high, you can see that the small caps outperform uh, the S&P. So that's why, as you know, the best sector that I've picked for 2024 is small caps. And again, I think as interest rates come down, the biggest beneficiary of lower interest rates will be uh, the small caps. Looking at, uh, we get the, uh, also the PMI, the January PMI uh, rose to 50.3 last week compared to uh, 47.9. Above 50 is expansion, below 50 is contraction. We, ca we got the fourth quarter GDP at 3.3%. Again, much better than expected. So the economy continues to do much better. This week we have the FOMC, we have the payrolls, and we have earnings from the large tech companies. Looking at the technicals, let's take a look at the charts. This is a 20-day moving average, 48.07. We are pushing 49 today. We're above 4,900 right now on Monday morning. Uh, as 4,908 to 4,923 uh, was the target on this market on the upside. Well, we are pushing 4,923. If we get above that, then we can continue moving higher. Uh, 4,695 or right around 4,700 is the 50-day moving average, and that is next support. Long-term, as I've said, 5,000 to 5,150 is the Fibonacci projection uh, from the January 22 high. So we're only about 100 points away from there for the 5,000. And that would uh, definitely be, I think, somewhere that we could get to. I was looking at somewhere this year, but here we are uh, at the end of January, and we are getting closer and closer to that number. NASDAQ 15,475 to 15,675. Uh, well, we're 15,541 uh, this morning. So we have hit uh, the Fibonacci targets on the dailies. These are the targets, uh, the projections that we get, uh, and we are there today. We market us up today, but we did get a lot of earnings this week, so we will see how that turns out. Weekly numbers, again, uh, the high that I'm looking at is about uh, 16,212. That is the all-time high from November of 2021. That's, uh, so we came all the way down, we've come all the way up, Support now at the 20-week moving average, which is 14,468, then the 50-week moving average, 13,440. Looking at the 10-year yield, as I mentioned, 5% was my target. We hit that, came down to 3.78. Uh, that was a third wave low. Uh, now we're getting a fourth wave rally. Fifth wave down should take us down. Uh, support is 3.78. And I'd like to see it stay around 3.78 to about 3.6. I don't want it to go much below that because if it falls much below that, that means the economy is slowing down too much. The question is, can the Fed what would the Fed do this week with interest rates? Expectation 97%. They're not going to change interest rates, leave them where they are. March is about 50-50, 50% probability they're going to lower interest rates. But I think we have to wait and see. Uh, the Fed, if it starts lowering interest rates in the second half of this year, that uh, could play, you know, they can, they'll be accused of playing politics, trying to juice up the economy a little bit going into the election. So they want to avoid a view of uh, being political, which they are, but that's what they want to avoid, at least the perception of that. So we will see, uh, I mean, real interest rates now are really high. That means if you adjust for inflation, with inflation coming down, interest rates are still high. So real rates are really much higher than they've been in a long time. So the Fed has room to lower interest rates, but the economy continues to do well. So there's no reason for them, and inflation continues to come down. So the Fed, I think, will take a wait-and-see attitude, at least this week. But what they say, what Jerome Powell says at the, uh, at the meeting, at the, at the uh, press conference, I think will have a big impact on the market. Crude oil, as I said, uh, wave one down, wave two up, wave three down, uh, four up, and then we'll see a fifth wave decline. Uh, but that will happen once we get to a ceasefire in Gaza, which there's a lot of talk about now, uh, some kind of talks going on between Qatar and, uh, and France and, 
and Israel and Hamas. So we will see how, if we do see some kind of ceasefire, that could bring, get some of the tension out of the oil. And then we'll just start looking again at supply and demand. And there's plenty of supply now of oil as the economy, especially in, in uh, China, slows down. This is the small cap, as I mentioned. Uh, it hit a low, had a dramatic rally to the upside. We saw a fourth wave decline. We came and kissed the 50-day moving average right here, bounced up from there. And as I said a couple of weeks ago, I thought this was a good area. If you don't have small caps, to add it around 188, 187 or so. And if you were able to do so, today we are at 197, and we are above the 20-day moving average. We're above the 50-day moving average. Target somewhere is between uh, 208 to 210 on the upside. Uh, this is the Fibonacci projection from this high that we're looking at. So small caps, I think, could be the beneficiary this year if the economy, if the Fed is, is, uh, can somehow uh, get that soft landing, which they're working on. But if they keep rates higher for longer, um, which I don't think they will, but if they do, that could slow down the economy. But if they start lowering interest rates or we see any surprise interest rate reductions, and the economy slows a little, but not too much. And that's the hard part, because it's, this is not something like a sports car. It is a super tanker. It takes a long time to slow it down, to speed it up, to make it turn. So what the Fed does has a long-term tail. It does not affect the markets immediately. Those are my thoughts. Those are my views. Make sure you tune into the podcast that Javed and I are going to do. If you've subscribed to it, you'll get a notification where we'll talk in detail about what happened to the markets last week, what to expect next week. Thank you again for joining me today. I will be back with you next week. Until then, good trading. presentation contains the current views and opinions of Moise Ansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compaq Asset Management, a registered investment advisor. The views expressed are current only as of the date of this presentation and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice and nothing is personalized to any investor's individual circumstances. Compaq Asset Management offers investment advice only after entering into an investment advisory agreement and gathering client-specific information about goals, objectives, financial status, and risk tolerance. This presentation uses terminology associated with technical analysis and provides charts to illustrate some of the concepts discussed. Technical Technical analysis is a security analysis method with the goal of forecasting the direction of prices of securities or market indices through the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. We make no assurance that past performance or the use of technical analysis will accurately predict future prices. Further, a risk of technical analysis is that overfocus on historical patterns could lead to ignoring or downplaying security-specific concerns, overall market or sector concerns, or other factors because we assume inaccurately that historical patterns will repeat themselves. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance.